Cinema. Welcome back to War with Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Bar the Collector. What's up, everybody? And it's a special guest because you brought somebody on. Yeah, man. I, we talk about it all the time, and to me, I think one of the coolest things about movies, not necessarily always being the main character of a movie, but just being a guy in the movie. Like, I think just being a guy in the background of Goodfellas would be like a life accomplishment for me. This was uh, our guest today. He's been in, in so many movies. I think it's hard for me to even name them all. But uh, Kev, how you doing, bud? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm a big, big fan, and uh, we've been friends on TikTok for a little while now. Like you're like yeah. one of the first people I uh, actually connected with on TikTok. Yeah, and, probably uh, from. Was it from the Vince Vaughn video? Probably. I think so. Um, yeah. But you've got so many good uh, little bits that you do. It's it's great. If you don't follow Kevin on TikTok, you really should. He's uh he's hilarious. His humor it just hits me it hits my funny bone every time. So Yeah, I've got but a weird got, sense of humor. It's great, man. It really is like um some stuff that you would never even think people would go for. And it, it, I think it's gold. Thank you. I'm a, like I said, I'm a big fan. I'm kind of nervous. I don't usually get this way when I uh, <laughs> when I'm just talking with people. But yeah, that's, well, I'm kind of uh, nervous too. I've I've never done this before. So. Oh well, it, it, it's it's no big deal, man. I tell you, this uh this podcast we keep it loose, so we like to have fun. Um, okay. so yeah, you you can say nothing wrong here. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, I just wanted. I got some questions that I think you know everybody would would want to know so you keep calling him kevin what his name is kevin Pryor, right yes sir yes. what's his uh yep. tiktok handle so everyone can follow him it's pretty sure K- it's that kevin Pryor. it's kp Pryor. kp Pryor. sorry right. that way everyone can uh, look you up and check your stuff out right yeah yeah yep yeah, yeah and i've been on Greg. oh go, sorry go ahead well, i've been on tiktok for a couple of years and um at first, I was a little hesitant um, because, you know, I, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, there was talk of, you know, getting rid of TikTok in the U.S. So I was like, well, I don't want to put stuff out there if it's just going to get taken away. Yeah, but, I remember then, that. Um, but then I was like, well, I'll just put a few things out there. And I was testing it out. And then I told a story about working on a set. And that's what got me really getting into it. And that I was like, I love your stories, man. I really do. I think that's oh, what uh, I think that's what's got you such a great following is uh, is the fact that your stories are just so cool and you know they're just they're great. You know it may it, you know it's it's you could you know relate to it. Well, thank you. Yeah, I I wish I had more because I was only out in California for a certain amount of time, but. Um, yeah, I'll probably just start retelling them. I'm sure there's little details here and there that I haven't told, but yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people have requested that I tell more stories about working on movie sets. Well, uh, Nick actually prepared. He never usually prepares for a podcast, but he has a nice <laughs> little uh, yeah. questionnaire that he would like to uh, ask oh. you, and hopefully it'll unravel some of these stories or jog your memory. Yeah, whether yes. it's whether it's great or not, I am famous for just going off the cuff <laughs> nine out of ten times. But today, I actually did come prepared with some questions for oh, you. Nice. So, uh, what made you want to get into the movie business or just in movies in general tv i know you've done some tv too but uh what what made you want to do that like well it started probably back in high school um like at that time i was thinking i wanted to get into computer science and work on video games but then i started uh watching a lot of movies and i was always a big fan of of jim carrey and yeah so like in living color i watched it every week um i just thought he was amazing uh, just the genius in general but um then when ace ventura came out i remember going to see that movie and um yeah i just thought it was hilarious and then it came out on vhs and that was the first vhs that i bought and i watched it every single day over and over and over again to the point where i just memorized the movie that was and, the movie that my dad and me watched together probably the most as a kid. Dad and like Die Hard. Like we watched Ace Ventura all the time. What's well, so um, funny because I mean, in repeat viewings, you just notice the little things that he does with his face. 
that's what I found so funny. I mean, it's just so ridiculous and over the top. Um, it's so and it's surprising funny. that he. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, no, I was just gonna say. Uh, me and my wife went on a Jim Carrey binge recently, watching all oh. of his movies. Yeah, and uh, I was like, there was a time when a grown man talked out of his ass in a <laughs> blockbuster movie. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, they were worried. It, they didn't know if it was going to really connect with people, but it, it definitely did. And um, yeah, I started, uh, mem- I knew all the lines. So then I started like trying to make the faces and then, um, yeah, basically trying to do an impression. And, but at the time, I never considered uh, getting into acting because I was really shy and quiet. Um, so it, it was never a thought, but yeah, I did these, I basically did these for myself to make myself laugh. And then um, that was going into my senior year and Ace Ventura was still huge. And I had a friend that, that would do Ace Ventura impressions. And this was like the first week of school, my senior year. And he, um, he was doing this impression. And it, I mean, it, it wasn't great, but it was, it made me laugh. And I was like, well, I, I kind of do one too. And so I did it for him. And I don't know if he was just shocked that it came from me because I was pretty quiet in general, or if he just genuinely liked it. But mm. um, he got other people like, hey, you've got to see this impressions. And I had like four different scenes that I did. And so I did them. And then each class period, uh, more and more people were asking. And then it got to the point at, at lunch, um, they asked me to do it. And I got on a table and I did one of the impressions and like, you know, hundreds of people all clapping. So that became addicting to me, like entertaining that people. Cool. That is a cool story. Like I would have never yeah. had the guts to, to go for it like that. Well, that's the you know? thing. I, I just, something just came over me because I knew it so well that I, I just wasn't nervous. I just became that, that character. Um, nice. But then that night, uh, there was a football game. And so I did it at halftime. And then every single day after that, every, every class like I was field, in. Like, like with the band and shit or were like, like in the stands? In, in the stands, in the stands, oh, like okay, at the okay. bottom of the stands for the student <laughs> section. Oh, that's cool. And right. so half of them couldn't even hear me, but I was like doing the slow motion football scene. So they, they got an idea of what <laughs> it was. Great. I love that scene. <laughs> it's so good. So yeah, I, after that, I mean, I, I was kind of addicted to doing that. And so my, what I was thinking I wanted to do, I was more like, Oh, well, I do really like doing this. So I, I got into theater and then the next year I went to school and I started for computer science. And as I was getting further along, I was like, well, I really do like the entertainment industry more. And this computer science stuff is really hard. So um, I, I, I changed to a radio TV major in a minor in theater. And so I did a couple uh, musical musicals there. And um, then I was also doing, uh, my school had a lot of broadcasts. Uh, broadcast journalism so i was do- i was an anchor but then when i was doing that and this is before well it was right in the infancy of the daily show mm. i was a big fan of the daily show and this is be- this is when um craig kilborn was the host and i was a big fan of it and um so i was always trying to do like fake news on our news and um <laughs> the, the people in charge did not like that at all. I remember one time we, I, I did a fake news story and um, yeah, the guy in charge got really mad. He had to, re- he re-edited everything before it went to air a couple hours later. Um, yeah, he was not too happy with me. Like I think, cause it was just like the random things that you, you would see on the daily show, like um, where they're standing with the microphone, but you would hear me and there's like a trash can. And so then I would come out of the trash can and like, like nothing is happening <laughs> different. Like this is Kevin Pryor from Davenport, Iowa. And, and it like, it's not, I just acted like it was just a normal thing when it really wasn't. And, and they did not like that at all. So um, I was doing all that stuff. And then 
Uh, probably it was, it was in my senior year. I had to make a choice, like, what do I want to do? And I still wasn't sure. So I had a choice to either go to, I, I wanted to get my master's because I still wasn't sure what I really, really wanted to do. And it was between uh, Miami University to further do uh, TV broadcasting. And they said, I, I mean, I'd pretty much be guaranteed a job once I finished the master's program. Or mm-hmm. I could go to California and pursue film. And film production, but there was no guarantees. Mm-hmm. And I was just such a fan of movies. Um, cause I like, even during, during that time that the four years that I was going to school here, I would go, we had this place called Hogan's video and I would go and get five, five VHS tapes to watch. And, um, I had a friend on the, the cross country mm-hmm. team that, his parents owned uh, a video store. So he was recommending me all these movies to watch. And I'd, I'd get five movies and you could keep them for a week, but I would finish them in like two or three days. And then I would go back and get five more and then five more. So I was watching a ton of movies during that time. So yeah, I, Nick and that, I talked about that whenever we were kids, uh, like both of our fathers, we went to those rental stores and we would just pick oh, out the most random movies when we were kids. Yes. And that's why we all just love movies. And it's such a lost art. <laughs> and I, oh, actually, yeah, sure. I was actually worked at two movie theaters in my life too. So that didn't <laughs> oh, happen. awesome. Yeah, that, that would have been a cool job. That's, that's a job that I wanted when I um, first got a job, but I just, I, I couldn't get it. I ended up working at a grocery store, but, um, yeah, so I was, uh, I had to make that choice. So I, I ended up going to Chapman university in California. And so that's how I got into it. I got my ma- master's in film and TV production. So it was more behind the scenes stuff. But, um, while I was doing that, what was it? I, I had w- one of my, my, um, friends who was also a filmmaker he told me that they had an open call for uh, Little Nicky, but ended up being li- Little Nicky, the Adam Sandler oh, movie. Man. And so he said, yeah, do you, you want to be in the background of this, this movie? And uh, it didn't pay anything. He's like, wow, you, you can actually do that? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Um, so we show up and it was basically what they call a, a cattle call where it's hundreds of people, um, but we didn't Are get paid. Went- are you at the Globetrotters game? Um, that's, that's the one I was thinking of. Like you'd be at. The is that the very end game. of the movie? I'm even trying to remember. I've only seen the movie. <laughs> oh is that, wow! Yeah, it, now, it's, uh, it is the basketball game. Yeah, if, if that's the one. Yeah, the, if it's the, the basketball game. Yeah, it's the it's the um yeah, it's the they the, the his brothers take over people that are um that are playing against the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh yeah. Yeah. Rest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. coming back to me now. I gosh, it's been so long. It has been so long since I did that one. That's so and, cool that you were there for that though. Like, <laughs> I just think that's the coolest, man. I don't think you that's can like see That's like one of my me. favorite scenes of the movie. We have oh, like, awesome. been 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to yeah. go back. Like if they do a 4k and like pause it to see, cause I kind of remember where I was sitting. But the, I mean, there's just no way like someone would be like, oh, there, there you are. It's because the camera's always moving and it might be quick cuts. Right. 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 But, uh, one thing I found so interesting is how many like big movies you've been in as an extra. And I found it so fascinating that you were able to get in all these movies. It, Dude, it, it's, I got lucky. I mean, yeah, some yeah, of the movies. Really yeah, it's, it's pure luck. It's, um, yeah, like, an example, um, I mean, this is fast forwarding a bit to uh, when I'd been doing it for a while, but with Wedding Crashers, I had a call in service. It, because usually this is, I didn't have a cell phone at the time. This is how long ago this was. So, wow. what you would do for extra work, um, I, I guess I should tell you like how I got into actually doing this. So, from Little Nikki, when I was in the audience, we were talking to some girls. And they said they were paid to do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, wow, I can do this and get paid to do it? Yeah, I, how do I do it? So they gave me the information and I signed up at Central Casting. That was, that's the main background acting place out there. 
Mm. So I, so from that point on, I was calling in for extra work. And what you do, what you did, it's, it's changed so much now. It's, it's so much more streamlined. But back then, you went in, you got your picture taken, they put you in a database. And then they would give you a main line to call. And then the casting directors would um, pop up there throughout the day. I mean, there's no warning. You just, you just had to call this number. And they would say, hey, I need you know, 15, 18 to look younger Caucasian males. Uh, call this number if you're interested. And so then at that point, if you fit, fit the bill and you wanted it, it became like calling into a radio a contest where it's like constantly busy and you're just calling and calling and calling, trying to get through. And then eventually you do, and you just hope that they still have the sp- a spot open. Um, so that's what I, I did, did it that way for a while, but then um, it just became hard because I was only working two or three days a week and you, you make so little money doing, doing background work, unless you're in the screen actors guild. Right. So, I got a calling service and what they did was they called for me and then they would call me. Um, so I'd be on a set one day and then they call me that night and say, Hey, call this number for your information for this booking tomorrow. So I didn't have to call that call in line anymore. Um, the only problem was that sometimes they would book me in places that were like a two hour drive away. Um, so I, I didn't know what they were booking me on. And, so now back to that story with, was Wedding Crashers. I got booked on that. And it, at that point when I was had this casting service, oh, gosh, what did they book me on this time? Wedding Crashers? Is it a reality show? And so I, um, like, IMDb had a little bit of information. I mean, that was, IMDb was still very small. It didn't have all the information that it has yeah. today. But um, I could see that it had um, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. So I was like, oh, well, this, this might actually be, cool. be kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Because I was a, a huge fan of Vince Vaughn's from, from Swingers. So. Um, Great movie. Great movie. Yeah. So, so I, was, I was really looking forward to it. But that's how I got on to um, Wedding Crashers. And going into it, I was like, oh, gosh. What, what am I getting myself into? What, in cra- what is this thing? And by the end of the shoot, I was like, I was telling everybody, this movie is going to be huge. I mean, I was laughing the entire week that I was on set. And it didn't come out for another year after we shot that stuff. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah, as an extra, was, you, don't, you don't really or, know anything about the movie, right? I'm assuming. Right. Yeah, I, I had no clue. All I was given was uh, just the scenario, like we were at, um, I was, you know how they had the different weddings. I was in the Jewish wedding scenes. So, um, it was all the stuff at the very beginning of the movie. That's awesome though. Yes. So you got to, so how close did you get to see Vince Vaughn in the, the so I, I, to him. I mean, he, um, so one of the rules, uh, I, I'm probably, I, I just, uh, re- re-recorded my, my TikTok on the Vince Vaughn story with but like, you know, better visual quality or whatever. But basically yeah. I'm telling the same kind of thing where um, the big rule when you're an extra, you don't go up to the main actors and talk to them because um, I mean, you're there to do a job and they're there. They may have lines that they're trying to memorize. And so they tell you, do not go up to them because you can get kicked off that. Oh, yeah. um, oh, wow. But if they talk to you, then y- you can talk to them. And Vince Vaughn was just someone that um, he just he just didn't care about that rule. He would so as an extra, you um, like they might ask you, they might say things to you, like the main actors, but you you're supposed to nod or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Vince Vaughn, I don't know if he did that. I think he did it on purpose, but he would interact with some of the extras in a way that would force them to say something. So. When that happens, they have to get upgraded from an extra to a day player. So they got paid, you know, three or four times more because of that. Um, because so fast Vince so, did that. Yeah. So if you talk back to them, you have to be upgraded. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. And crazy. I heard I that happened that. multiple. That happened multiple times that week because of Vince Vaughn. Wow. So yeah, he. Um, 
Yeah, he was just awesome. I, I remember him coming up to a group of us because we were dancing most of the week. And he came up to me and this other guy and he's like motioning, okay, you're at about here, like pointing at our chest, but we need you way up here, like over his head. Mm-hmm. And not so much here, not so much here, but way up here. Come on, let's, let's go. And he was just like giving us pep talks all week. And um, yeah, that's mostly what the assistant director is for. But he, I mean, he was getting all the extras involved. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. And it really, because at that time, after a while when you're doing extra work, it just gets so tiring because they're long days and it's very little money and you're, you're just barely getting by uh, financially. That was, that was actually part of uh, one of the questions I had for you was what was your best, what was your favorite thing about doing it and what was, your, what was the worst part about it when you, when you got into it? What was the best part about being on set and what was the worst part about being on set? And I'm guessing that was more one of the worst things being yeah. having to do it all day, you know? Oh yeah. Um, and at the time, so I have a uh, high blood pressure. I didn't really um, have it under control at that time. So um, what it caught, it caused me to get a lot of migraines and one of the worst things, and this happened on a couple, uh, I was working on, on Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and on my wife That's and so kids. Awesome. I'm sorry. I'm That's figuring it out, dude. Trigger I word. love it. I love it. I fucking love it. Uh, I'm yeah, a huge both, Kevin Smith fan. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Me too. I mean, huge fan. But yeah, on both of those sets, I got a migraine. And it was just, it's just one of those things where I just cannot do anything and so i'm in a corner and on jane silent bob that was a 16 hour day and thankfully it didn't wow. kick in until about 10 hours in but those last six hours were just absolutely so that's a, that's a big scene with like a lot of noise and everything too yes. like uh, you know yes. you got boris day the time going <laughs> off and you got uh the dancing and everything yeah i can imagine the lights yeah they could oh be yeah a, they could be a tough yep. one yeah, it was, yeah, there was, there was a lot of dancing and, um, yeah, that's pretty much what the whole scene was. It's the very end of the well, movie. In fact, I know I'm just I'm kind of jacking your story a little bit, but you're actually in the end credits dancing next to Jay and Silent Bob with yep. the monkey. Like, yes. Yeah. Do you want me to tell that? Ever. That is so cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. I'll have to go back and rewatch it so I can see you. <laughs> you will. Like once, uh, once you see the end of the movie, oh. you see him. It's yeah, awesome. and if you, um, I mean, you can just go into YouTube and type in Jay and Silent Bob uh, uh, end credits because it's yeah, it's the whole end credits when they come in and it's more stay in the time. And so cool. we, we were shooting that. Well, so we got there, and so this is the story that I tell about that that set because I mean it was something it really had an impact on me, but. Um, you know, to anybody else, and it would have been like, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but I, so we're getting ready to go out there and the assistant director is explaining the scene, going over everything. Um, and so they're getting us ready and they're like, okay, so there's going to be an orangutan on set. So if you are placed by the orangutan, do not make any sudden movements because, Mm -hmm. It'll rip your face off. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. They they tell this, and then they're Multiple telling him he needs to dance next to me. That's the, well, yeah. that's, it's the best story. Sorry, yeah, so, so we, we go out there and there are hundreds of us. So I'm like, oh, I probably, cause I had given up an audition. I was waiting in line to audition for um, a role on Boston public, but someone oh, told yeah. me that they were looking for extras uh for kevin smith's next movie so i i got out of line and signed up to be an extra because i i loved kevin that's why we're friends so Kev. that's why we're friends <laughs> so that's why i was there and so anyway so we get, get on set and there are hundreds of us so i'm like i'm probably not you're not probably not gonna be able to see me I, but that's what i was really hoping for to be seen in a kevin smith movie mm-hmm. but yeah, so I, um, I'm standing there getting wait, waiting to get placed. And um, I just, ha- where I was standing, Kevin Smith was walking around and like kind of placing a few people. And then he like placed me right 
you know, right in the thick of everything. Mm-hmm. And of course the orangutan is like right in front of me. And <laughs> there was, uh, who else was there? It was, yeah, Jay, Jay was there and Will Ferrell oh. was right there. Oh, Shannon no. Elizabeth. They were all just right there. Not and even. so, um, yeah, it was crazy. So they start shooting the scene and I- I'm not moving. Cause I remembered what the AD said. And, um, the first thing was that, uh, there were, I guess there was some girl that was looking like right into the camera, which is a big no, no, you never look directly in the camera because it pulls focus away from the scene. And so he got on this, this girl, um, about that. But then he also said, Hey, um, it, if you're in that area, you, you need to, to move. I need to see some movement from you because you're right on, you're right in the scene. And so like I started move like shimmying a little bit, but barely moving. And so we finished the take and he's looking at the playback. He's like, guys, you really need to move. I mean, you're right on camera. You've got to move. <laughs> so right on just, you. <laughs> Mr. Smith, yeah. I would love to bust a groove for you. So nice. <laughs> But, but that's that. the thing is an extra you you can't like you can't talk back you can't you know voice right. your opinion oh so, god that's even worse so i'm like okay <laughs> well and i didn't want to get taken out of the scene so the next it was either the the next time or the time after that then i i started moving and i then it, we did it a couple different times so one of the takes they were able to get it um where i am moving around like dancing like doing a goofy dance but um, first time I, I started moving around and sure enough, the orangutan kept looking back at me. It's like, oh, <laughs> please, don't. Terrifying. Yeah, I, 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 so I'm still dancing. And then um, the orangutan reached out and grabbed my arm and I like freaked out. And God. the animal trainer jumped in and grabbed the orangutan. I, I, I still, I don't know for sure if I ruined the take or if, because if you watch the scene, the camera follows uh, Jane, Silent Bob up on to the stage right, where yeah. they're singing. Go through the crowd, um, yeah. So it might have been after that. I I can't remember. I hope it was, but um, yeah, I was I was scared to death. Um, but nothing nothing really happened. But the animal trainer had to come in and grab the orangutan uh, before anything happened. <laughs> How'd you lose but, that eye? That was yeah. the greatest yeah. story either way. I mean, obviously oh it's great that nothing God. happened, but like. See, that's yeah, just so, like an epic story on top of another epic story, man. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. That I, five I minutes you just told is better than anything I've done in life. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just like one of the great things. That's like why I wanted to have you on, man, because I, I think people need to oh, hear thanks. these. So I'm going to oh, piggyback yeah. off uh, one of his questions. What was like the funnest set you were on, like that you had most fun with? Oh, definitely you- Wedding Crashers. Um, oh, yeah. Because at that point I had been doing it for a couple of years and um, I was just, I don't know. I was just kind of getting tired of it because Mm -hmm. um, it's tough. I mean, you're, you're just in your car. You'd spend four hours in your car, 12 hours on a set and then um, get a check for, you know, 40, $50 for an entire day after taxes. That is rough. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, how many years ago, but still it's, yeah, it's yeah, probably I mean, like two or three times that right now, if I was non-union, I was trying to get into the union. Um, and what you need to do is be a featured extra. And they, ha- they have so many Screen Actors Guilds with SAG vouchers that they give out. I remember uh, you day. talking about this on your channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you get three, then you can join right. the union. And I was only able to get um, two. I never got my third one. And it was uh, in that it was like pure luck. It was um, just if someone wanted to help you out, if you knew someone, um, if you were a pretty person, you usually could get one pretty easily. Um, I mean, that was back in the day when, yeah, there was, yeah, anything went on a set as opposed to now where there's, um, yeah, they wouldn't be able to get away with that. I don't think. Yeah, that's what I always hear is it's about like who you know kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was 100% that. And yeah. um, an example of that 
the the very last movie that I worked on. It was literally the the week before moving back here to Iowa. Um, I worked on the holiday. And yeah, I remember so you telling me that. It was so frustrating because, like, it was it, it was. I mean, it it was nice, you know, working on one big movie before I went back. But you know, I was just kind of f- frustrated with everything, not being able to get my last uh, SAG voucher. And when you're on these sets, you sit with groups of people and you get to talking to them. And I was with a group, and there was this one girl that it was her first week on a movie set. She wow. was just trying it. She didn't really have any acting aspirations at all. She was just kind of doing it. And so, and she was placed near, near me where where I was on the set. And, um, she ran one of the grips she went to school with. So we were there for five days and on, I think it was either the second or third day, she had been talking to him and he hooked her up with a SAG voucher. And then she got, she got all of her SAG vouchers that week. She had no aspirations to be in movies. Um, but she was able to join the Screen Actors Guild because she knew knew someone. She went to school with someone, and that after that week, I was like, okay, I, I'm I'm not doing this. <laughs> it's yeah, just not fair. A, uh, it doesn't matter. Experience. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was trying to get into audio engineering. And yeah. I wanted to do like engineering for like metal music and the fact that I didn't really know anybody. Everyone had their friend that they worked with. And it's just like, I had to give it up just yep. because like you said, it's just not fair because some people just get shoehorned in and, you know, people oh, yeah. don't really care about it. Just get left by the wayside. Yeah. And you can put in all the work you want. And that's what I always tried to do. I would volunteer for, for stuff that, that nobody wanted to do. because. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes people, it, it's a uh, busy day and it's really draining, but they'll ask for a few volunteers to do something. And I always tried to volunteer because I wanted to be in any possible scene that I could, could get into. But right. um, yeah, it just never, um, uh, the two that I got were from working on a movie called Pumpkin. It was a smaller movie, but um, yeah, I just, I just got lucky. I just got yeah. lucky on we have the IMDB pulled up and I see it. Pumpkin is a disabled soccer player. <laughs> yep. That was uh, me. I didn't yeah, see I that was, movie, but it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I'd have to watch it again um, to see like um, how much of it would hold up, especially in this very PC world that we live in. Right, um, yeah. yeah. I'd be interested to see like how inappropriate some of it, it is because yeah. <laughs> I, I mean it definitely it, it, it was very in the terminal oh what's that i forgot you were in the terminal like, oh yeah yeah did you get yeah, to see uh, did you get to see tom hanks at all yep yep i got to see him i i um it i've worked on two tom hanks movies i worked on that and catch me if you can um oh, nice. yes, i love get that that's, uh, that's where i was like yeah that's why I said he's been in every movie you could think of, man. That's awesome. Like Kevin's, Kevin's that guy. Yeah, I'm, I met Spielberg on the terminal. Like he came over and introduced himself. So that was really, really cool. Um, but then on Catch Me, because Catch Me If You Can was before that. Um, I I didn't get to meet him, but it was a, a school scene, and um, I remember just standing there, like right in front of the there were all the lockers and it was Leonardo DiCaprio and Spielberg and they're just going over the scene Ooh. and I'm just staying a few feet away. And I'm like, gosh, this is crazy. I mean, that I, I'm on a Steven Spielberg movie. This is insane. <sighs> so yeah, that, that was just one of those moments where I was like, God, oh, this, this is really, really cool. And that would have never happened if you didn't move to California, man. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like obviously, you know, oh, you're yeah. from, you're from Iowa. Like, like, I don't shoot many movies out there, I would imagine. No, no. Um, and so when I got back here, oh, that's that's another story I can tell. So I got back here and I started working at my alma mater um, in financial aid. And But then I, I always had the intention of wanting to try to teach each film. 
And there wasn't really a, f- a film program at the school, but um, I got to talk into them and they let me teach a uh, horror film class if I taught a public speaking class, which I, I, I was like, are you sure you want me to teach public speaking? Because I'm, I'm a horrible public speaker. I mean, I could tell stories, but I, I cannot, I, I'm not very good at public speaking. But like, well, if, if you want to teach this horror class, then you have to do that. So I did that. Um, but I was, I did have a lot of people come up and ask me like if I was interested in working on films. So, um, people knew that I was, what my background was. And so they would ask around, um, and they'd ask me for advice on whether they should go out to California or not. But one of the people in the administration, his son was friends with two guys um, from Bettendorf, which is like five, 10 minutes away from here that were, had just gone out to California, but they had shot some movies around here in Iowa. And so they said, well, uh, uh, he said, I can give them your information and maybe they can help you, you know, if you want to get back into film in Iowa. Um, so he did. And the, one of the guys contacted me and he gave me all these resources and I was like, oh yeah, well just, if you make, anything back here in Iowa, let me know. I would love to be on one of your sets. Um, they made a few, uh, low, lower budget films. Um, and they they were really talented, but, um, you know, that was, gosh, how many years ago was that? 16 years ago. And, but so I didn't, I went back and forth with the guy a couple of times um, but then nothing ever happened, you know, I mean, cause you make a lot of connections and you just meet people and just don't, nothing ever happens. Mm-hmm. But then, um, so I can't remember how many years ago I saw they had a new movie coming out and that movie was a quiet place. They were the writers of a oh. quiet place. Wow. That's so, what? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Scott Beck and, and Brian Woods. So yeah, I'd been talking to one of them, um, but we just were never able to connect. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that, yeah, they, they went out to California and they made a few connections and they stayed out there for a while and really pushed through all the hard, cause there's always hard times out there well, and yeah. they, they were able to sell their script for a quiet place. Now they're making all these, they're, they're, they've got their hands in so many different horror films. They got in the direct a few, they've got a new science fiction film coming out with uh, Adam driver. I can't remember the name of it. Oh yeah. I saw the preview for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they directed that too. So yeah, that's yeah. Just the, one of those random things that was pretty cool. I thought instead of, uh, instead of like five degrees of Kevin Bacon, you got five degrees of Kevin Pryor. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, so you're not really in the business anymore. Is that something that you just didn't want to do anymore or, you know, yeah, just I, um, too difficult. I like, cause getting your foot in the door is really hard. Like, like you said, you just got to keep at it. Yeah, it, it, it was, yeah, I, I got to a point where it was just, it was really difficult. Um, I think I was out there for seven years mm-hmm. and you just get to this point where like, I mean, I was barely making rent and, um, yeah, it just wasn't paying well. It was very hard to get consistent work. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas now it's it's so much easier. I mean, you can put stuff online. They they book everything online. Um, it's not something where you have to call in constant, like spend hours calling in for a job. You can just right. submit your headshot and then they look and then they'll get back to you if they want you. So you can literally work pretty much every day you want to if you're out there. Right. Um yeah, it's just, it, it was just very, very, very difficult. So I had a, I had a question for you that I've, yeah. I think I, I've heard you talk about it before, but um, yeah. like I said, I think everybody would like to know. Yeah. Um, uh, you answered earlier who, who one of the cooler people was, uh, who was, who was somebody that was, that was, that sucked. Like oh, somebody no. that you, that you had to, that you had to be on a set with and you're like, Maybe thought they would be nicer. Like I always heard Vince Vaughn could be a cool dude or could be kind of a dick. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really know which way it would go, you know, when you told the story the first time I heard it. But I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I think that's why Wedding Crashers is such a good movie because 
he seems like him and Owen Wilson are just having a ball and Will Ferrell's in there and they're just, you know what I yeah. mean? Like they're doing well, whatever. If, if you're looking at the, if you're looking at wedding crashers and during that montage, cause they, they were just, you know, it's a bunch of cuts of different things. Oh yeah. It just looks like they're just partying hard with every oh, yeah, single that's the, group of these you people. You see like, Owen Wilson like cracking up and that, that's like him genuinely laughing at, at Vince Vaughn because he was just being so goofy and just off the wall. And like, he's like, just his personality is kind of like that. He's so outgoing and funny. And um, yeah, I guess I, I could see maybe like he might have, that he, someone might've caught him on a bad day um, since right, then right. because he's such a big movie star. Now everybody bothers him and yeah, yeah, um, he's yeah maybe he just, now. Yeah, I I don't know, but um, when, yeah, when I encountered him, he was awesome that entire week. But um, let's see, who was a bad one? I I try not to tell too many bad ones because um, I was gonna say you don't want to throw anybody under the bus, like no, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, only what you're comfortable with, if you know whatever you're comfortable with, you know. <laughs> well, well, the Eddie one I Murphy told- was a complete asshole. <laughs> Just oh, <kidding>. well. <laughs> Like there's there's people that uh there's there's people that we've we've talked about on our podcast that like yeah but we never met them that's a different that's story. true that's very true that's very true <laughs> but, I actually have that is, reference because the the one I probably I I mean I just got a little glimpse of it but yeah Eddie Murphy on uh, Pluto Nash he um I I didn't interact with him but he just did not seem like he wanted to be there at all. Yeah. yeah, he was definitely there that. for the paycheck. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, but that's so crazy because I love Eddie Murphy, but like yeah, I me too. about him too. Yeah, he just seems like he's a control freak. Like he wants everything his way, or else you know he doesn't. Well, he's been famous for so long, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, God. since he was what early like twenty one, right? Yeah, SNL, and then it just went yeah. straight into starring in movies. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, right into Forty Eight Hours and Beverly Hills Cop, and yeah, I feel like he's one of those guys that like his greatness gives him a pass for being a dick. Like, you know. you're so famous, you get a pass, right? right? No, yeah, I mean, come on, I mean, the dude wrote Delirious. I mean, that's like one of the greatest stand-up specials of all time. A little homophobic, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, man. It's just great. Like, so funny. Um, yeah, um, yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, but, he. Uh, uh, just just from what I saw, uh, that that was just a couple of days, and that was another movie that I was I was dancing in, and it's it's the end scene of another movie where I'm I'm dancing, um, and it kind of like dance opens. Are, are I was gonna say, you your dance moves are the dance move. <laughs> You're killing it. Well, yeah, I mean, I do the goofy kind of dancing. Maybe that's why they wanted to get me on camera, but. Like the shot, it starts with like me dancing with this girl, and then it goes past, it tracks past us into Eddie Murphy. But um, just from what I saw, like in the downtime, I, the one, and I've told this story on TikTok where I just, um, I couldn't hear what was being said, but um, Jay Moore was sitting next to Eddie Murphy. T- it looked like he was telling him a story. And Eddie Murphy was just looking straight ahead and was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like, not, didn't look at, like he was paying attention at all. Um, and Jay was like all into his story. And he, he was another one that was really cool. I threw, uh, Jay Moore we seems went, like he'd be a bro. Uh, yeah. Uh, we went outside the sound stage and we were throwing the football around him and me and a couple other people. Um, yeah, it was just, it's just, and now thinking back to that, it's just so crazy that I was outside the soundstage on Warner Brothers lot throwing a football around. With Jay War. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. It's crazy. Yeah. I So I, I do miss doing some of that stuff now. I mean, I don't think I could, I don't think I could do the extra work. I've tried submitting for like um, roles, like one liners here and there. Right. But it's it's a lot harder being in Iowa. Um, like yeah. if I I apply for so just since I've started doing TikTok and I've been getting more excited, like that passion for movies is feels like it's back. I've been um, applying for stuff in LA. Like if they have like they if it pays enough that it could cover uh, my my flights right, or whatever out, out there. Yeah. 
yeah, then, then I, then I apply for it, but there's a lot that, you know, it's like a $200 gig that, you know, you have to, I'd have to fly out there, find, I, I do have a couple of places, I have friends that I could stay with, but I'd have to, you know, stay there, rent a car. It just wouldn't be worth it. So I've been applying for little things in LA or even just around the country. Um, but then also in Chicago, because that's only like two and a half hours away. But I haven't gotten anything yet. But yeah, I do miss I do miss doing some of that stuff. I was just gonna say one of my big questions, I have a circle twice, is how are we getting you into Princess Diaries three? Because <laughs> I did I'm a, like you, Kev, we need closure. We need to know what your character yeah. has been up to yeah, since I did that the last TikTok. movie. I um because there are a couple of that. sequels that I've because They've talked about doing a Wedding Crashers too, as well. Oh God! If they do that, you gotta go, man. You gotta. <laughs> that go. would be awesome. But but I think even more so the Princess Diaries because it, I've been in two of them. I and know that's insane, man. Like I watched those movies with my daughter. So I'm uh, curious, yeah. like, how did that happen? Like you were in the first one, but did you like want to be in the second one, or did they call you back? Like you got to be back. Like I, I'm just, curious. I don't know how it, it was, works. So, well, it was pure coincidence. Um, okay. I, so how all the whole Princess Diaries thing happened, um, I actually, gosh, I want to say it was on the weekend. It was, I went into an open call with one of my friends from film school. He was kind of getting into background work too, just to make a little extra money. And we went to uh, open call for Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton film. And so there were a couple hundred of us there and they were looking for like really, really skinny people. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm going to get this. It's going to be a couple weeks of work. And so I got cut right off. The bat. So wow. I left and usually they don't put anything on the, the lines during the weekend. But for whatever reason, I got back and I just, I was frustrated because I was for sure I was going to get this. Um, because I, I was, I had been, I, it was at a time when I had been running like 10 miles a day. I was, I was really, really skinny. Um, so I, I was kind of frustrated that I didn't get it. Um, but so I got back, I just checked the lines for whatever reason. And they had this for princess diaries on there and I called and I got through right away. And I think it was because it was the weekend and they looked at my picture and they booked me. So it was a week of work. And we worked in Pasadena at a school there. And um, yeah, so I, I worked on that movie and it came out. And then... Um, Heavy hitters weeks. in that one too, dude. Yeah. You got oh, Tony yeah. Andrews. You got, you got Anne Hathaway. I yes, love see? Anne Hathaway. And that was Anne Hathaway's first big movie. Yeah. I mean, she had been oh, on really? a TV series. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she was an unknown. And like when you when we were reacting to her new look in the movie, I mean, that was real. I mean, we, we had only seen her um, with the glasses and the long, the long hair, um, just like, you know, when she gets all fancied up. Um, yeah. we, that was in that classroom was the first time that we got to see her like that. They had um, to like really try hard to make her not look that yeah. good. You know what I mean? Like with the hair and the hat and, and the glasses yeah. and all that, you know, but like, yeah. I remember that being like a big thing. Yeah, yeah. So that um, on that on that set, I didn't get to meet Julie Andrews on on Princess Diaries one, um, but because it was all the classroom scenes. But um, right. Manny Moore and Anne Hathaway and um, Heather Matarazzo was in the first one. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah like. <laughs> She plays one of the classmates, like the haters. Like the yeah, hate she was honor. one of the mean ones. Yeah, and they yep. find out she's a freaking princess. <laughs> Get out of here, yep. you peasants. Like, <laughs> but then, yeah, so, so yeah, you got to play a classmate of hers in the first one, but then in the second one, you're a groomsman, aren't you? Yeah, so for the second one, that was a couple years later, and I just happened to call into the, the lines, and they were looking for guests at the royal wedding for princess diaries too so i called in and they said yeah yeah we can use you so i showed up we the, sometimes they have for the movie especially the movies they have fittings where you go in for a day you get paid you go into the studio or wherever and they fit you for 
a suit or a costume and um, like get your exact measurements. And then you just use their costumes for the rest of the shoot. So I went in for this fitting thinking, okay, well, you know, they're going to put me in some nice suit or whatever to be a wedding guest. Right. And they started putting me in a tux. And so I looked at my, um, the voucher is how you get paid. And it said uh, on their groomsmen. And I was like, oh, I, th- I think there's, I think there must be something wrong because I, I was That's just supposed to be a wedding guest. <laughs> and like, no, you, we've got you as a groomsman. So uh, yeah, we're going to get you all set up in this tux. And, uh, and so at that point, I was really excited because I thought, oh, I'm going to finally get my last SAG voucher. Oh, and man. so I show yeah. up and the first day, it was a full week and it was the first day. And God, I want to say it was either the first or second day where like there are hundreds of people in this, in this church. And that, that was shot in Pasadena too. Um, and Nobody I've got to walk Pasadena. down the aisle with, with someone and in front of the camera. I mean, all these, you have hundreds of people watching you walk down the aisle. And I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, we did it. We shot that for the first two days and then they didn't need the grooms in for the last three days. So we sat in extras holding pretty much 12 hours for those last three days and didn't do anything. I didn't have a cell phone. So I had maybe had a book or whatever and they had tons of food. So I was eating all day, but, um, that sounds cool. I yeah, was going to yeah. say, I was nervous at my own wedding. I couldn't imagine being a groomsman yeah. at like a movie. <laughs> well, yeah. And you have Gimli watching you walk down the, mm-hmm. the aisle. It was crazy. Um, yeah. He was there. Oh, who else was there? And Julie Andrews and Anne Hathaway. Um, and, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, there were a few other faces. I re- Oh, I don't know if you know um, Tom Poston. Poster? Is it Tom Poster? From uh, Newhart, he was. Uh, uh, do you remember Newhart at all? <laughs> that that's Bob from Newhart? the '80s. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah it's Sorry. it's an older show, but um, <laughs> yeah, he was a big character actor, and I reckon it. And that was one of my stories I told on TikTok. How nobody knew who he was, and he came into extras <laughs> holding. He was eating crispy oh, yeah, yeah, and I went yeah. up to him, and I was talking to him. And I just thought that was so cool, but nobody knew who he. They just thought he was another extra. This guy's a legend. (laughs) He's the reason we're doing this, y'all. Yeah, look look him up. Look him up on uh, IMDb. But he his big credit was Newhart. He he had done tons of different TV shows before that. But um, uh, yeah, did you like make friends, like extra friends? You're like, yeah, we're back again on this movie and just hanging out. Yeah, you do run into the same people. I can't really remember. I, I wish I could remember a lot of them because um, I, I want to see if they're still doing it. There, there are mm-hmm. some that I like have an old email from or whatever um, that like I might have been talking to them and we talked about, you know, working on a movie or something like doing a short film. But um, yeah, none like today that just the, the ones that I went to film school with that I did extra work that I still connect with. Um, there was one, there was one, there was this girl that we, we both r- were writing and um, she said she was going to contact me about maybe doing something in one of her short films, but she never did. I had her email and her name popped up. I, who was it? It was, she worked on, um, what is it? Outlander? Is that? It was some star show. I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, but she ended up writing for a TV show uh, eventually. Wow. But yeah, I um, remember Outlander. Yeah, I never, I never kept in contact with her. But there were a few people that I made friends with that I'd see on some of these sets. I just can't, I can't remember their names. Um, and but I would like to see if any of them, you know, maybe there's someone out there that's still working at it. Um, I do know a few people that are still out there, uh, a few friends that are still in the business. Um, we're trying to get in either behind the scenes or in front of the camera. Um, my old roommate um, from film school, when I, so when I uh, finished film school, moved to South Pasadena, which is an awesome area. 
it um, they filmed a lot of the original Halloween there, which I didn't find out until I had been living there for a while. Um, but they, it's just a really, really cool area. Um, I lived in this little house and it was kind of a suburban neighborhood. And I remember my parents bringing me to, uh, bring my stuff over to this new place and to meet my, um, my roommate. And he is a makeup, uh, effects artist and he's, he's really good, really talented. But he still hadn't cleaned out my room yet. And so they went in to what was going to be my room. And he had all these buckets of blood everywhere. And he had these realistic, like, arms and legs with, like, individual hairs on them. Like, they look real. Wow. Um, So, yeah, they go in there and they see all this. Like, oh, my gosh. Who who is this guy? (laughs) But he's just, he's still out there. He's working, um, actually, uh, when I was in California uh, last October, I got to meet up with him and another one of our film school buddies. And he, um, I, I just love talking to him because he's got all these stories about working on movies. And he worked, uh, when he worked, he's worked on like Hunger Games, Interstellar. Um, he worked on American Horror Story. Have you ever watched any of those? I've seen uh, it. Yeah, he loves Interstellar. Um, okay no, yeah oh no but he loves oh. christopher we we like christopher nolan yeah 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 oh yeah 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 I, yeah i'm a big christopher nolan fan but yeah that was one of them that i wasn't a huge fan of but um okay. yeah he's he's directed a, a movie um like a low budget horror film but he's yeah he's still working on a lot of tv shows and movies. oh he does a lot of um a lot of stuff for the superhero shows like uh, you'd see on the uh wb he and he told me he worked on the boys he couldn't really tell me what he did but he told That's me that cool. i yeah, love we love show. the boys we do love the yes. boys yeah so when he told me that i was like oh my gosh that is so I'm awesome gonna clip that out <laughs> yeah so, yeah so it, it's yeah he's That's still awesome, doing bro. it but he i think he um yeah, with anything, you just it's long hours, and that can be tiresome. Um, That's what I've heard a lot of. Uh, I follow a lot of technicians, like people that are boomers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, like it's such long hours, so you really yes. have to love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And he's he's still doing it, which um, I think is awesome. Um, that is awesome. And uh, there's someone that I haven't really connected with uh, that I went to high school with. And he is out in Cal. He's been out there ever since um, college, and he's just plugging away at um, trying to get into acting. And he's had a few small roles in like TV shows and movies. Um, he was in some west. He did a western horror. How was it called? The Undead. Um, but he he started in, in that, and they're going to shoot a sequel to it. But he's been out there this whole time, so he's you know, living that life where you're just kind of, you know, just hoping for something big to, to push you through. And then once you hit that, get that one big thing, then you can do it for like consistently and like actually not have to worry about, about bills and all that. But I, yeah, so he's, I am curious, like, is that something you were pursuing? Like, did you always want to be an extra or did you have aspirations to be like a uh, more than that? Cause I, yeah, yeah, I wanted to be more than that. I yeah. the only reason I was doing the extra work because I thought it'd be easier to get my sa- it, um it, it was it was a lot harder back then to get mm-hmm. um the auditions. Um I had an agent for a while, but they weren't getting me any auditions. Um and it is frustrating to look back because now with technology, I'm basically my own agent. I I send my headshot out for different roles that I find on websites. Mm-hmm. Whereas before you couldn't do that. You had to, you know, you had to have an agent or someone you could, you could like actually drive somewhere and submit your headshot or send it through the mail. Right. But I'm sure it's a lot easier having the agent do it for yeah. you. Oh yeah. 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 And get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they'll take, um, and it's kind of, it's hard out there because there are a lot of people trying to take advantage of you. So they always tell you, well, don't get an agent, um, mm-hmm. that tries to tell you that 
you, know, you need to get these certain headshots where you pay them a certain amount. Like you want an agent that's uh, SAG franchise and they only take 15 or 20% of your check once you get a job. So they don't right. get paid until you get a job. So that's the kind mm -hmm. of agent I had. But then unfortunately, it was called oh, it Colors Talent and Talent Agency or something. I don't even think they're around anymore. But I remember I went in and I auditioned for commercial and TV because there were separate divisions, commercial and TV film acting. So I, I auditioned for the TV and film, and I did one of my Ace Ventura things. And then for the commercial, they gave me some sides, and then I had a minute, to, a minute or two to look over them, and then I had to, to give the sides like I would be reading for, for TV. And so mm -hmm. I, they, they signed me for both. So I thought that was really cool, but then they never got me any auditions. And then I remember I was sitting at our place in South Pasadena, and we were watching the news and they popped up on the, the, um, the news because they were booking people and then keeping a hundred percent of the check. They weren't paying the people for, for oh, actually going through oh, it. Man. So at that point I had been with them for so long that next day I got in my car and drove to Beverly Hills and I was like, I, I'm done. I, I know I signed something, but I, I don't want you to be my agent anymore, give me my headshots back and I'm going to find somebody else. Right. So after that, uh, I just, I, I didn't ever get another agent. So, um, yeah, there's just so many things that have changed since, since then. Whereas yeah, now I've got, I've, I still have a lot of my headshots from, from back then, but I, um, yeah, I just took my headshot here at home and then i uploaded it and now i can just send it to whoever i want without an agent right now now i know you did tv and movies uh yes. was there did you have a preference over which one or was it kind of pretty much the same thing just a long day or you know did you prefer to do one over the other yeah i liked I, well i like doing movies because um i just love movies in general and right. when you're working on a movie more often than not, they're, they're, they're multiple days. Um, yeah, most of the movies I worked on were multiple day jobs. So I didn't have to worry about calling in for something every single day that I was at home. Um, so yeah, I, I prefer movies. And just because I, yeah, it, it's, it was so fun. I think Princess Diaries was the first movie that um, I just happened to come back home because my whole family was back here in Iowa. And so I just happened to be home when Princess Diaries came out. So it, it was really exciting going to the theater with my whole family, like my, my mom and dad, my brothers, my aunts and uncles, and we're all sitting there watching Princess Diaries for the first time and getting to watch me in these scenes. So I'd you know, point and they'd be you know, all excited. And um, so yeah, that's why I, I loved doing movies more. And that's a cool thing. Yeah. You know, with TV shows, it's it's not like back then. I mean, yeah, sometimes you'd have the DVDs, but a lot of the stuff. I mean, some of the stuff you can't even find some of these TV shows because I've wanted to do TikToks on some of the TV shows that I've done. I just, I just cannot find any footage, um, like on like like legal on legal sites that I can go to um, right, right, right. from these from these I'm shows sure like, harder too because you're like what episode was i on <laughs> and that's that's the thing so i have to like go through like there was um i saw that scrubs was was um one of the streamers and that was a fun experience but i wanted to find the clip and i just there's so many seasons of that i'd have to go through you know dozens and dozens of seasons to try to find it because i can't remember what the scene because that's a show where it's like it's kind of all over the place where they go. Like it's, it's, um, it would be very hard to figure out which episode I was on. And even if I was, in, if you can even see me, I'm, I think you could, cause I always tried to watch the shows, but I just, I cannot remember on that one. I just yeah, remember being be, there. Yeah. And, that's gotta be rough. Cause they might cut your scene out for some yes. reason and you're looking for yourself and you're like, I can't, I don't know which one. So I can imagine my wife may have a, point you out because she loves scrubs she used to watch that all the day all the time back in the day 
Oh yeah. 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 I did too. I was, you know, watched most of it. Um, but yeah, that happened. That happened with Princess Diaries. I remember we, um, shot, there was, they had some, what they call second unit stuff where it's basically uh, a different director, like a second, uh, a, like a assistant director or not assistant director. Sec- what is it? I think maybe just like a second unit director, but it happened to be Gary Marshall's son. And so he was directing us doing little cutaway scenes. And so there was a scene in the classroom because there weren't too many of us in that classroom. And he had me um, like throw a paper airplane and then walk out of the frame. And it was, it was literally just me. Um, so that was something they shot that they could cut in. Um, but they, they just didn't use it. So I was, that's what I, that was what I was most excited to see because it was literally just a shot of me that they had filmed. Um, but they didn't put it into the movie. Wow. That's that's heartbreaking. (laughs) But in that scene, you can, you can see me really well. Like when she takes off her hat, you can see me in the back reacting to it. And I remember, um, yeah, we, we got the, um, so when we get the, I projected that movie when Gary Marshall came to my school. I worked as a projectionist for the school. That was one of my other jobs. And Gary Marshall came to the school and I got to go to some of the dinners with, they'd have a dinner with like 20 people um, that could meet the director and talk to them. And so I put, was putting together the movie and basically put, if you know, the, like the old film, they come in these big canisters right. and they're like six reels for a movie. You have to splice them together. So you're cutting off frames, end frames of sometimes scenes, depending on how many times it's been moving, because you have to splice each of the ends together. And my scene just happened to be the end part where I had to, to slice it off. So I, I have a frame of, uh, of my scene on 35 mil- millimeter film. But um, cool. yeah, I, I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, that was one of those cool things that I got to do um, where I, we would get these directors. That, yeah, this is a whole other thing that I got to do. We would, um, that was one of my first jobs out there. I had to find a job and my, I made friends with this guy that was the main projectionist. And he asked me if I wanted to help him and so they would have classes that they would show 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter uh, prints. I, I didn't know how to do any of that, but he, he taught me. And so, uh, yeah, I became his right-hand man doing that. And we would get directors bringing in their personal prints sometime. And so I would have to put them together and then I would, it'd be the day before, and then I would get to screen it. So I'd get to watch this movie by myself. Um, and make sure everything looked okay and that, that I'd spliced it together correctly. And then I would screen it the next day or, or someone else would screen it. Um, so what do you, uh, what do you think the biggest one you ever saw was the biggest, anybody else, like that um, you can remember? Is there the, anyone like stick the biggest out mind? person that came in? No, so as far as like what movie you got to slice together the before you got to uh, see before anybody else, like if you can remember. See, the thing is, most of these movies were movies that had already come out. Like they oh, were, okay. yeah. So it wasn't, I think the only one that ha- I screened that hadn't come out was The Sultan Sea. Um, and that was, I can't remember the guy's name, the director. But he directed that um, Shia LaBeouf movie, Suburbia. I, I can't remember the, the, the director's oh, name. Disturbia. But he, he I love Disturbia. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I got to meet a ton of director, most, mostly directors. Um, and I got to go to dinner with, um, it was Gary Marshall and Brian Singer. And, um, and then I just got to hang out with, um, John Badham, who directed Short Circuit and War Games and Saturday Night Fever. He was hanging out with, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah those movies, are eighties movies, movies right movie. there. Yeah. Th- he he did some great eighties movies. Um, uh, Stakeout was another one, but I got to, so there was a film series of his, and I remember one night um, 
I was standing up in the projection booth and it was during one of the screenings for all the students. And he came up and he was watching the movie with me. It's, it was just another one of those surreal moments. I'm watching the movie with the director of the movie, just hanging out. That's um, so cool. Yeah, there was uh, Robert Zemeckis. He came and, and brought Cast Away. Um, oh. Yeah, so many. Uh, Martin Landau came with Ed Wood. Um, I'm trying to remember. There were so many different directors that came. That it, it was just, it was a really cool experience that I got to meet a lot of them because they brought um, their movie. Oh, probably one of the best ones for me because my favorite movie of all time is Empire Strikes Back. And Irving Kirshner came, the director of Empire Strikes Back came and talked. Well, he brought uh, The Eyes of Laura Mars. That, that was the funny thing. He brought this movie called The Eyes of Laura Mars, which is a good movie. Mm-hmm. But um, before the Q&A, they, they, um, they came out and, to introduce him. And like everybody there wants to know about Empire Strikes Back. They probably uh, even said, though he, please don't ask about Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, they said, <laughs> okay, we know that he's done Star Wars movies, but he, he's here to talk about Eyes of Laura Mars. So please ask, only ask him about that movie. So then they introduced him and he came in and everybody's asking him about Eyes of Laura Mars. And then some, he said something. Um, he was answering a question about visual effects and he, he told a story about um, having to use like a cheap special effect with um, a fishing rod to move Yoda on Empire Strikes Back. And then everybody's hands went up <laughs> and every single question after that was about Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, yeah, he's probably like, ah, oh, they wait 20 minutes. This is a lot longer yeah. than anybody else. Yeah, thought, you know, yeah that, was, that was pretty cool. Oh, Richard Donner. That was another one. I, I just loved... Um, hearing him, I got to sit, sit in on the Q and A. My my um, boss got to go to dinner with him, but just to hear him talk about Superman and Lethal Weapon oh, and, oh. and Goonies. I mean, these are Richard movies Donner, that I've so. seen so many yeah. times, and he's telling us about making those movies. The Omen, just just amazing, yeah, movies that I've always loved. It's very That's cool. That's one thing about it, Kev. That that time in your life, man. Like I said, so many uh, epic stories and things you got to see and be yeah. a part of. Like that's you know the stories alone is worth it. Like I said. Well, it's just because uh, that's what Nick wants. He wants to be an extra in movies. He's like doesn't even want to be the main. He just like wants to be the guy in the back drinking a beer. Right. Do they as shoot any as- movies near you? Um, I, th- I would think like Miami and Atlanta. They you know, did oh, yeah. a lot yeah. of Atlanta. Huh? They did the Punisher in Tampa. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Not the Actually, one, Atlanta's um, probably after L.A. and New York. A- Atlanta is is probably the next pl- biggest place that they shoot stuff. Um, and even, I mean, especially because of the the Marvel stuff, they shoot everything there. Well, um, when they were shooting Jay and Silent Bob reboot, they were doing it in New Orleans, and I was thought oh. about trying to go out there and see if I could get on as an extra, but I have a job and a family, so <laughs> that went out the window pretty quick. No, but, yeah, but give up the wife and just give up my job. Yeah. Who needs <laughs> who needs to have somewhere to live, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so Miami. I I mean, I I back that was my second choice. I could have been down in Miami doing. Uh, TV broadcasting. And it yeah, it's been so a whole crazy that thing. you had those two paths. And I mean, obviously, looking back now, like, you know, but uh, who knows? Maybe we could have, maybe you were, maybe you would have been the guy announcing the Miami Heat. We don't know <laughs> where, where you could have went down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but yeah, I don't even think, um, like, it's probably a good thing I didn't do it because I, um, it, it's, like the news was so, I just found the news to become so depressing. Like I want to do yeah. funny stuff. I want to do real news. <laughs> yeah. Just talking about all the shootings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been another shooting today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I could do that. And then you have to think off the cuff. I mean, I can do that somewhat, but yeah. Um, yeah. Consistently, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be, I wouldn't have wanted to be one of those people going viral for saying the wrong thing. Right, right, right. 
that would have been me for sure. <laughs> well, I know some of, some of your followers don't know this unless they've uh, seen the TikToks and uh, Greg didn't, but you were a video game tester for a little bit too. Weren't oh, you? Yes. Yes. That was like, so I remember you talking about some of the games you worked on. Yeah. Um, so that was just another one of those things where, um, yeah, I, when was that? I was I always wondering if that was while you were doing the background acting, yes. if you yes, were doing so the extra work. Or, I was still kind of doing the work. extra work, but then I had gotten married and then I needed to get some more income. And so um, I needed like a regular, kind of a re- regular job at least like a couple of weeks of work instead of one day here, one day there. Mm-hmm. So I, I, um, yeah, I had heard it was out in Calabasas, California, uh, while I was living in South Pasadena and, um, they were looking for video game testers at THQ and they, they're famous for all the wrestling games. So I was going to say, I was just playing WCW versus NWO <laughs> yesterday on 64. Yes. Yeah, so um, I went out there, and what they did was, it it was the perfect place to start as a video game tester, because I don't think all the places are like this, where they would hire on a whole bunch of people, and it was only for one week. And so they would teach you what you do, like how you look for bugs in video games, what you're looking for wrong. Mm -hmm. And... um, so then, yeah, so you would, you would look for all these things. And, um, then at the end of the week, they gave us a test. And so we took the test. We had to write up certain bugs with the game. They gave us different games to look at and we had to find certain things and write them up. And then they, they would keep a percentage of those people. So, um, yeah, so I, I was kept on. I I learned how they did it and they kept me on. But then for all of us that were there, they said, okay, we're going to keep you, but just just know that this is probably only going to be like three months of work. And then we're going to get rid of like 75, 80% of you because they have like cycles. I don't know if it's any more because I mean, there's so many video game companies out there now, but at that time they had cycles where they were working and not, uh, testing. Mm-hmm. So we love we love the movie Grandma's Boy. So <laughs> oh, yeah. thinking about that. when you first told me <laughs> that you tested video games, I was like, "That's the coolest thing ever." But then you well, also yep. told me that they got rid of everybody else. Like, that sucks. They didn't talk about <laughs> yeah. that in the movie. Well, that's the thing about Grandma's Boy is it glorifies it, but really, I'm assuming it's not as glorious as the movies no. out to be. Like you're just no. playing the same level over and over and over yes. and over. Yeah, and that that was one of the stories I told. Um, mm, so my I first game was yeah, my first game was SpongeBob SquarePants Employee of the Month on PC, Ooh. and I remember getting put on the game. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. So they gave me the build of the game, and there were only like when it started, w- when it finished, there were probably five or six of us testing it. But at first, there were there were only two of us, and then I had a team lead. Um, so my team lead gave us the build. Um, it was like the version of the game. And so we, we had, he's like, okay, pl- play through this. And so it took me an hour or two to play through it. And I was like, okay, I'm done now. Now what do I do? He's like, well, you better get used to it because you're going to be looking at that game for 40 hours a week for the next month. And that's, Ooh. yeah, I, I played through that game. I don't know how many times, um, and it got to the point where I was like hallucinating. I would see SpongeBob when I was driving home on the, the freeway and I would see him on the side of the freeway. I would have nightmares about SpongeBob. Um, oh, it God. was, yeah, it, I mean, it was just SpongeBob all day long. Um, but thankfully I worked with some really cool, my team lead was really cool. And the one guy that, that I had started with was, um, you yeah, know, we got along and talked about movies and stuff. But, um, yeah, that was tough. And then I went straight from that to working on Spirit, uh, Stallion of the Cimarron. So that was another game. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was another game that was, you know, takes an hour to beat. And then, oh, what We're else just going through as a horse over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, oh, gosh. I mean, we found a lot of stuff. 
um, especially oh, for SpongeBob. They were because um, we would write up because it was like a four kids game. They were always trying to s- sneak in like sexual references. Um, <laughs> so we would write that up. It, and it's funny it's because they would always try to, the, the developers would always try to sneak it by. And some, some of the stuff I'm sure ended up in the game. I, I wouldn't be oh surprised. But, um, that sounds like some crap I would do if I was developing a game. <laughs> that was, God, the horse game though, though. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it was different on the horse game because that, that was Disney and they were. Yeah, uh, they're uh, on top of that. I don't yeah, know, they yeah, because really back in the that. 90s, they had the golden age where a bunch of stuff slept through that's the That's true. Yeah, it's that's a corporation true. now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I went from that to play, uh, to testing Hot Wheels Velocity X. And then my last game that I tested at THQ was um, WW, was it WWF or I think, it was, I think it had changed to WWE Smackdown uh, yep. Shut Your Mouth I think was That's the title awesome. um, but yeah th- that one was kind of that, that one was fun because I hadn't really played a lot of um, wrestling games except for one of my friends in college really was a huge wrestling fan so I kind of got into it there but I remember seeing the graphics at the time, the graphics for that game were just amazing. And it's crazy to see what they've become today. Yeah. But oh, yeah, yeah it, it's just insane. But there were so many options we had to check. But I remember sitting there one day and I had only been, they had been doing their Friday firings start, starting to. And I remember sitting there one Friday and um, it was like around lunchtime, like, hey, Kevin, can uh, you come with me for a second? I was like, oh God, what am I getting... And I get in the boot and I walk in and to this conference room and I sit down and the head HR person is there. I was like, oh, that's great. And like, uh, Kevin, I'm sorry to inform you, but this is your last day with us. You have five minutes to collect your belongings and vacate the premise. <laughs> wow. So, so uh, yeah, it, I mean, I figured I was getting fired, but just the way they did it, it was so like cold and I was very surprised. So, um, they still I grabbed, more work not to get out. Yeah, <laughs> You're exactly. too harsh on our game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I grabbed, I grabbed my stuff. And the cool thing was like, I was down, at, um, in the entryway and the security guy was going to walk me out and, um, my team lead came rushing down. He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to take him out. And so he walked me out and, talk to me a little bit and he's like don't worry about it i'm sure you're gonna get something else and um we'll keep in contact and we did we kept in contact i ran into him at the e3 conference a couple of years later when i was working at ea uh, i think I, I don't know if he's still doing it but i you know, tried to keep in contact with him because he was um always he was awesome to work for um and um yeah so i after that I would was going back and forth between doing extra work and working on games. So then I applied to work on um, work at uh, Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog Studios, and this is before like Uncharted and all that, mm-hmm. uh, Last of Us. Um, but they had um, the Jack and Daxter series, so it was for Jack Two, and I okay. applied, and they were at the very end of the game. So they said it was going to be a lot of hours. It was like five or six weeks of work, but I've, I've never worked that many hours in a week ever in my life. And I, and I hope that I never, ever have to, again, I worked a 90 hour week, one of the oh, weeks, wow. the last week. And so I, I went on a Monday at 8 AM and then I left Tuesday night at 8 PM. And then Ooh. Did that two times that week, and, and worked the uh, but I worked the entire week. Basically, I had a little bit of rest on that Wednesday, and then the Saturday. But yeah, it was it was a full ninety hour week, and we were um, the game for its time was like one of those open world games that there weren't too many yeah. of, um, like Grand Theft Auto, where it was you, you know it would take twenty hours to beat it. So there was right. a lot to look at, and. Um, I remember places to go and yeah. Yeah. And it, it, that was a tough job because like, I'm usually pretty quiet when I come into a new environment as it is. So like, I, I wasn't really voicing like, okay, I've seen, see this bug until the last couple of weeks. 
so I didn't, I don't think I really made an impression there. Um, but I did find that last week a bug. It was like three o'clock in the morning where if you, um, hit a boss, one of these end level bosses with a certain weapon at a certain, a certain place, the game would freeze 100% of the time. And those are the worst bugs to find because this is back in a time where they didn't send updates. The game that you got was the right. game. I mean, you didn't, there were no, it's not like today where you, you get a bad game and then you <laughs> spend months <laughs> updating it. Yeah, After we're not getting cyber, uh, cyberpunk back then. Yeah, you know, yeah. If, funny you mentioned that. I'm playing that game now. I've waited this long to play cyberpunk because, I mean, it's it it's a fun out. game now. It's it I, I really enjoy stuff. it. Yeah, but it took a couple of years. But yeah, um, yeah, games had to be perfect. So right. yeah, I f- I found a pretty big bug, um, in that game, and then that was only phone. six weeks. Oh, what's that? <laughs> No, I was saying they give you a huge bonus for finding such a bonus. Yeah. Well, then I, I did make a lot of uh, double time on that. And oh, I mean, right. the pay isn't a, like, it wasn't like a huge amount, but it was, um, at the time I remember it was, it was pretty good for, for testing video games. I thought it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, do you like after playing games for so long and like having to like, did it like, do you play video games today or did it like ruin? Like, I feel like that's something that would ruin it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know if it, I can do it anymore. I, I, yeah, there were a couple of years where I didn't play any video, video games. I, I have, um, like I have an Xbox series X. I have a PlayStation five. Um, but I don't play a lot of video games. I, but I do play some. Like if I right. just need to, just need a break from everything. Um, yeah, I especially the past couple of years, I've I've maybe played three or four games. Um, but yeah, there it took me a couple of years before getting back into it, and I did get pretty heavy back yeah, into yeah, playing exactly. video games. Just yeah, different spurts where I'm yeah I'm playing a lot of games and then I'm not playing a lot of games. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it. When I was testing, it was very hard to play any video games because you just, but that was a funny job, thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I went to school for graphic design and I had to quit because it was the same thing. Like graphic design is like a hobby oh. for me and yeah. like doing it for pay. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, um, the f- funny thing with that was, uh, my last testing place was electronic arts. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, that was the most corporate of my testing jobs. I'd say like we would, it was in Playa Vista, California. It doesn't exist anymore. They moved it, I think to Northern California, but um, it was right along the coast in LA. um, And it was really nice area, but they had like these facilities, like they had soccer fields, they had places where you could work out. Um, You, when you came, you couldn't park your car, That you had to valet park your car. Oh, wow. and, I wish they would do that at work. Yeah. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was weird. It was just weird getting used to that. But yeah. um, at first, uh, before it started getting really busy, it was mostly just nine, nine to five work, but it was driving on the 405 freeway. If you've ever been in California, it's like a mess, complete mess. So I would spend two hours driving there and two hours driving back. So I no. mean, it was very long days. And when we get into those 12 hour days, I, I would literally come home, go to sleep, wake up, and go right back in and do that no. six days a week, sometimes seven days. So, yeah, it was, it was just really, I, I had no time. I had zero time for anything else besides Moral doing Moral of the story, kids. Don't move Grandma's to boy's full of shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the glamorous lifestyle that no. we get out to me. In that no, it is, yeah. it is not. But, yeah, at, at Electronic Arts... I tested uh, Medal of Honor, European Assault. That was the first game I tested. And then, oh, what did I do? Oh, Tiger Woods, 2006. Some games that like, were a little bit more fun to play. You know, it wasn't SpongeBob over yes. and over again. You know? Yeah, Medal of Honor, I mean, that was more on the rails. Like, it wasn't you, like, there are certain things that you do in the game. Um, but you can go off, off a little bit. Um, but Tiger Woods was, was fun because we play against each other and that was like in the early days of multiplayer at all um where you would could dial up on the 56k modem and uh, play against people 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was that was fun because I, I did actually I, I did make a few friends from from there. One that I um, talk to every once in a while that uh, was big in really big into video games. But um, yeah, when it was funny, that was the funny place because when we were done testing, so we would take our breaks. We'd have, you know, so many breaks during the day. Um, we would go down in the break room and, and then play more video games, basically. Um, <laughs> but it was nice. They had an awesome break room where they had like, uh, they had the massage chairs and they had um, like one of those sit down uh, Pac-Man tables. And then they had a couple of pinball machines. That's what I u- usually would go down and play pinball. They had a Lord of the Rings pinball machine that I would play every single day, just trying to get my name in the high score. Um, oh, that's awesome. But yeah, they had, um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that you could do on, on, they called it a campus and it really was. I mean, there were so many different things you could do, like, especially sports, because I mean, it was EA, but they had, um, yeah, a lot of different fields. Like if you were interested in that, you could go do that on your breaks. That's cool. It is like dream job goals, but it, it's so expensive to live out there. I couldn't imagine. Yes. Yeah, that, that's another thing. I, I, I haven't looked to see what it costs out there, but I can't. I mean, just from, gosh, how much was it? Um, so we shared, me and my wife shared a place with one of my film school classmates. Mm-hmm. That was the last place. It was in Brea, California. And, um, we were, our portion of this two bedroom condo was $1,700. And that was in, you know, how long ago? 2006, I think. Wow. So yeah, a long time ago. And it was $1,700 just for Mm -hmm. a portion of that. I think the total was, um, it was close to 3000. Yeah. I had some uh, friends that moved out there and they're like, we had to move back to Florida because we were going to be homeless if we stayed in California. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there were a couple of times, if, if my parents wouldn't have helped me out, there, there's no way I would have been able to do it. There's just yeah. absolutely no way. And I was working. I was doing extra work. I just, yeah, it's just very, very hard. Yeah. So I, I give a lot of props to, to people that can push Stick through. Out, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But uh, as far as extra work, hopefully we can get you on uh, the uh, Princess Brides di- or Princess, Princess Diaries. Diaries 3. I've been calling it Princess Brides ever since we brought <laughs> you up. <laughs> it drives me crazy. That's a good movie too, though. Princess yes, Diaries that's, that's classic. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah no, I hope we, so. Whatever we got to do, Kev, we got to get you. We're going to start a petition. We're going to do everything to get you back on that movie. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, <laughs> we'll boycott I it. Don't forget it, man. <laughs> Put, um, I made that, that video on TikTok about, you know, you know, how can I get on this movie in hopes that maybe someone might get tagged that, you know, might know someone and someone did tag, uh, I'm about to tag um, in. Oh yeah. They might've tagged her. She didn't, it was, uh, uh, it was the girl from even Stevens. Do you remember that show? Yeah. Um, yeah, the girl from that, they tagged her. She was the voice of Kim Possible, but she favorited my video. Um, so just little things like that, where someone that's in at Disney, you know, who mm-hmm. knows if they can do anything, but um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. They're, they're just writing it now. There. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see. And if it meant that I might have to like fly out there, I mean, as long as it wasn't too expensive. Right, I, right. I really want to, yeah, I really think it'd be cool to say that I was in all three Princess Diaries movies. Yeah, we got to close up the trilogy for your character. For sure, yes. man. <laughs> I need yes. this to happen. But uh, we're coming up on two hours and I don't want to take the rest of your oh, day. Geez. But, uh, but yes. yeah, Kev, we appreciate you coming on and hopefully we, hopefully you had some fun. Yes, and, uh, yeah, thank you. Time doing something like this. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming on, and we, it was nice to hear like some background on these movies that we love and adore. And I have oh a yeah, lot of thank you, fun stories thank you for having me. I yes. feel like a lot of people like if they're interested in it now, they know you know what what they can do to get it going. So yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, they can 
follow me on uh, TikTok and I can try to give, I try to give advice on how to get into it because it's, I mean, sometimes it can seem daunting how to actually, you know, figure out how to get started, but it's, once right. you figure it out, it's pretty easy to get into it. Yeah. Hopefully this guy over here will take some tips from you because that's all he talks about is wanting to be an extra on a movie. So oh, yeah, they should yeah. definitely do it. Especially. Yeah. It, I don't know I how go far. to Atlanta for a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, they shoot tons of stuff in Atlanta now. A lot of big budget movies. That'd be so cool if you could get on one of those big Marvel movies. Give me a Marvel movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm an Avenger, technically. No, you yeah. just get a bouncer at a titty bar. That's all you would be. <laughs> it's good well, do, they me, shoot, do they shoot any of the Star Wars stuff there, too? I don't know. I, if it, is it just Marvel, or is it just... Or do they do... I, I don't know for sure if they... I know they did, a, I know they did like... Um, like some of the Fast and Furiouses they did down, oh, that'd be they cool. did in Atlanta and they did in Miami. Okay. There are certain ones, I guess it's depending on what, I know a lot of it's shot in Canada too. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, like, awesome. we appreciate you coming on, Kev. Uh, yeah, thank you. We're going to, when it gets, when we put the episode out, I'll definitely tag you in it on TikTok awesome. and awesome. let everybody know they could come listen to it. Sounds good. Thank you. All major stri- streaming platforms, man. Right. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, right. we'll talk to you later, though, but I appreciate you coming on again. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, Kev. We'll see you later, bud. <laughs> yep. Right, talk to you later. Yeah. Have a good one. Yep. Have a good one. Bye. Later.